I want to welcome you to another segment of endodontic education. Today I'd like to focus on three-dimensional obturation. Let's get started. Previously in other segments we've demonstrated how to take off the clinical crown intact. We've shown access preparation. We've done glide path management and shaping and disinfection. In this segment, I'd like to emphasize and illustrate the warm gutta percha with vertical condensation technique in the mesial root. Well, here's the shape canals, and you can look in here, and uh, as an aside, this is the face of endodontics. Well, joking aside, when we have a shaped canal or canals, and when we have disinfection protocols accomplished, we're ready to commence with warm vertical. In this instance, we fit a master cone, and it's a non-standardized medium master cone, and in this instance, this cone is matching the Pro Taper Finisher 2, which is a 2508. So the tip diameter on this cone is 25, 25 hundredths. The cone is fit in a wet canal and gently teased and slid to place. We lift it up, and reseat it. And by lifting it up and seating it repeatedly, we are marking our tug back point. And by seating the cone, as just mentioned, every time that cone rubs into dentin, it'll leave a little mark. If we take the cone out and accurately look at the tip of the cone, that's where we should see the little rub marks or indentations. This means we have apical tug back. Notice the cone is smooth and slick and shiny over its length, which means it's free and not impinging or in any way contacting dental walls in terms of a tug back position. We need to fit our pluggers. And we fit the biggest plugger in the coronal one-third that fits loosely. We fit a smaller diameter plugger that will work in the middle one-third. It needs to be loose unrestricted by unyielding dentinal walls. And finally, we can fit a 0.5 plugger 15 millimeters off the reference point, which means we can move gutta percha at least to the 20 millimeter level. And here we are graphically showing that. Aspirate and suction out your reagent. Most of it can be eliminated by just using aspiration procedures. This will reduce the number of paper points required to wick up the residual moisture. Set your paper points a little longer than your master cone to see if in fact the canal will dry a little bit deeper. And if you push that cone against something rigid and it accordions a little bit, you'll begin to appreciate that maybe in fact we could try fitting the cone even a little bit deeper. There's the world that is and there's the world we see and they're not always the same. So I like to do this little drill because that part of the paper point that is dry is that part of the paper point that is inside the canal. This part of the paper point that spots means the part that's beyond, so the cone needs to be trimmed back to the consistent drying point determined with the paper point drying method. Sealer is introduced on a buttered cone. Notice how the cement refluxed coronally. Now withdraw the cone and look for the cone to see if it's still buttered. If it is, you have enough sealer and you can simply tease this cone back to place. Teasing the cone to place allows sealer to vent back up coronally so that you don't needlessly express sealer through the foramen. Again, teasing in the MB. Notice the cones at length. And again, we'll pull the cone out and inspect its lateral surfaces to make sure that it still is uniformly buttered. If that's the case, back in. If you saw a denuded area, you could simply rebutter the cone to make sure there was sufficient sealer. Again, the sealer is in place. We're ready to pack. And here is the electric heat plugger searing off the non-useful butt into the cone. The heat wave is about 5 millimeters, and thermal softened gutta percha has compaction potential. Step the plugger around the walls, and notice as we press, the cone is being deformed laterally and vertically over a few millimeters. Come in cold, activate the electric heat plugger, and plunge. And plunge in about three millimeters or four. And by removing the instrument, 
you remove a thermal softened bite of gutta percha. And again, thermal softened gutta percha has compaction potential. So utilizing a smaller pre-fit plugger, clean the lateral walls and press. And by pressing for five seconds, we've generated a second wave of condensation. And through heatings, we can deliver thermal softened gutta percha right to the terminus of the cone. The smallest pre-fit plugger, the 0.5 plugger, can now work at about 15 millimeters off the reference point, and it can thermal soften and mold gutta percha and sealer into the root canal system. Notice the apical one-third has been corked. We're now backfilling, so we're using the Calamus Flow backfilling machine to inject thermal softened gutta percha into the canal. The first segment that's injected should be quite small, maybe two or three millimeters, so that we don't have a void. Step the plugger around the circumference of the canal and a sustained press molds that rubber three-dimensionally into that region of the canal. By setting the cannula on the previously packed gutta percha, it rethermal softens the most coronal extent so that we can press this material laterally and vertically into place. We'll get cohesion between the injected gutta percha and the previously established gutta percha. So through a series of injections and compactions, we can reverse fill the canal. We could stop at any point along the journey if prosthetic dentistry dictated. Notice the plugger working easily and freely in the canal and then the press molds gutta percha laterally and vertically into that region of the canal. You'll be surprised how much control you have with this technique. As an example, not having to battle seeing your way around visually all the supplemental points that have been placed lateral to the master cone in the lateral condensation technique. So again, in the ML, we can squirt and pack and squirt and pack, working with our dental assistant to benefit the economy of time and reverse fill both systems. Now that we're done, we can appreciate through an animation what we just accomplished, but more importantly, we can use a solvent on a cotton pledget and we can clear out the pulp chamber. We're gonna remove remnants of gutta percha and sealer that might be on the floor and the axial walls and notice that evaporate. We can now chase that with 70% isopropyl alcohol to remove any residual remaining precipitates of chemically softened gutta percha or sealer. This would allow any dentist to begin thinking about adhesion dentistry and fulfilling the rest of the seal. The post-operative film shows the provisionalized crown. Notice the shapes are smooth and flowing. Gutta percha has been molded right into the apical thirds. Notice the webbing between the merging systems in the distal. Notice the long anastomosing in the mesial system. And then the deep apical bifidity. Okay, that concludes the clinical op on how to do vertical condensation of warm gutta percha. I hope you've enjoyed this segment. And I trust that as your shapes progress, you'll start to flirt with warm gutta percha because it will enable you to fill root canal systems.